Ryan Schick, how are you? Great, great, how are you? So first off, how is the hydraulic factoring conference and exhibit been for you? What has it been like? How has it been just connecting with everybody? Yeah, it's been good. Industry-wise, I like coming to this because you see so many different people. As we say, the, the oil field's a very small world for as big as it is. Yeah. So see people we've worked with in the past at different companies and just to see what's going on, springing new ideas from what we do and, and try to make ourselves better. See what, what our competitors and our partners are doing. So it's always fun to see what's new in the, in the industry and in the field. Nice, so I love that. And you know, I've always been a fan. Corva's doing great things. Tell me about Corva today. I know it's 2025. I think the last time I was at CorvaCon was like 2020, 2021. What's, what's new at Corva and what can you share with us about your forecast for 2025, things we should be paying attention to. Yeah, I'd say the biggest thing, um, so we just celebrated 10 years, which is a big milestone for us. The newest things are starting to integrate. So we have our both our drilling, our completions platform, and being at HFTC, completions is my background on the frac side. But a lot of our recent pushes is integrating those two. Is they're segmented, and that goes for us and operators as well, that you have your drilling, you have your frac, you have your geoscience, but how can we tie all those together and learn and drive production? That's where all this data, all these activities are leading toward how we get paid at the end of the day. So we're trying to bring all those together. What can we learn from how the well was drilled, how it was geosteered, on how we can maximize our completions? I love that, I love that. And, and so when it comes to prospects, I know you're out in the field more than a lot of people. You get to hear on the word on the street of challenges, problems they're dealing with. What are some of the ones that come top of mind where for our audience, if they're going, hey, we're having that same kind of problem, it would make sense to reach out to you guys. Yeah, I'd say the biggest things is, is like those visualizations, because when we started, a lot of the things were efficiency. We're pumping 18 to 20 hours a day, how can we get that more and more? Well, now with continuous pumping, we're seeing 24 hour days. So the efficiencies are almost out the window, so it's not, where I guess the industry was before of how can we pump more, but it's how can we pump well. Oh. So it's not just saying, oh, we pump 23 hours where 21 good hours is better than 23 okay hours. And I think that's where there's a mindset shift in the industry. And part of that is we're getting a lot, a lot better at things that were a struggle. Mm. And so now that we're good, it's starting to shift. So it's not just efficiency, but how can we maximize the time on location, get wells online and get more production because I see a lot on the frack side, we're catching up to the drilling rigs. We're fracking so quickly that you almost can't frack more and you don't want to because of that additional downtime. So how can we do everything as good as possible and get every drop out of the wells that, that we can? Nice. And then when it comes to Corva, I feel like y'all have such a fun culture. Like I look at this, you know, and I mean the stickers and the, you know, I've been to your office where it's incredible to see the technology. What could you share with someone who's never been to Corva about just the heart of what you guys are all about? Because uh, meeting Ryan and knowing what I've seen, I feel like it's a pretty compelling uh, place to work. Yeah, I, I describe Corva to people as if we were a Silicon Valley tech company plopped in the middle of Houston in the oil and gas world. Wow. And it's a fun combo of both because myself, I'm very passionate. I love oil and gas, love energy, but it's an old school industry, we all know that, and it's fun to be on the cutting edge and look at things differently. So that's where we wanna shake things up. Our logo, if you can see on the shirt, is a delta for the change. We wanna do things differently and have that different mindset that's separate. And frankly, we were one of the first in the quote unquote SaaS tech world in oil and gas, and that was less, 10 year, less than 10 years that we've had a commercial product. So it's still new and we like to have a good time. That's why we're a good fit for these conferences. We love our happy hours. We have our mascot over yes, here, yes. the fun shirts, while doing really hard and really good work at the nice. same time. All right, so before we close it out, I do want to ask, like when I see something like this, what, what is being told? What's the story there? I'd say the biggest story of, of that old visual and with our geo is it's painting the picture of a well of not just saying, not just looking at numbers on the screen, but where we focus on our visuals is actually saying not just 
okay, here's your data, here's what's good, here's what's bad. All that benchmarking is, of course, very important, but how can we use that data to paint a picture of what's going on? So I'm not just going in blind and saying, this is how I think I want to drill this well, frack a well. Start bringing in offsets and visuals so I know if I'm looking at, we're about to stimulate these depths in a lateral, well, this is the gamma ray data. This is the MSC data. This is exactly where the well lies down hole and see that exact picture. So I'm not doing anything blind. I know exactly what I'm about to do, what I'm about to simulate and make the best decisions possible with the data and the visuals that we have. Ryan, thank you so much. Absolutely. I thank really appreciate it. Thank you. Corva.